Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, or technically tomorrow, is the start of the 1000 Doors Readathon, which is being hosted by Emma from Drinking by My Shelf, Megan from Meg with Books, and Tasman from Tea Books and Tasman. And essentially, this readathon is a choose your own adventure style readathon where they give you a prompt and then based on what you thought of the book that you chose for that prompt, it will direct you to another prompt. So everyone is gonna have a different journey and a different experience through this readathon. And I have been so excited for it, but <laughs> it has been very hard because I love to plan things and they didn't give the prompts out ahead of time. So it's all a mystery. I don't know what the prompts are gonna be. I don't know what I'm gonna be reading. There's no planning involved. And I've been a little stressed, but the readathon has started in the UK, so for me, it's like 7 p.m. right now, and I am going to open the first video and find out what the first prompt is and what book I'm going to be reading. So I did pull out a bunch of like my shortest books on my TBR as options um, throughout the week. These are kind of like the ones that I would most like to read, so hopefully I will be able to do all the prompts with this stack of books. I'm also buddy reading this book, European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewomen by Theodora Goss. I'm buddy reading this with Megan and she has kind of given me like a little sneak peek that I will be able to use this book for at least one of the prompts. Hopefully the first one because this is a giant book and I would like to get it done first. But okay, let me grab my computer and let's watch the first video. I don't know who's to watch. Like I don't know if I'm supposed to watch somebody's because they all three of them posted. So I'm just gonna click on one of them and we're gonna find out what's happening. All right, I'm gonna click on Emma's. I'm nervous. <laughs> Ooh. This music. It sounds like something from like a horror movie. This readathon is officially underway. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, I will link my original announcement video in the description box below so you can go and check out what this is all about. But if you're here to take part in the readathon, you are in the right place. Okay, all of the admin out of the way, let's start the readathon itself. Are you ready for your first prompt? Your first prompt for the Thousand Doors Readathon is five. And you can interpret this however you would like. So maybe you want to read a five star prediction from your TBR shelf. It okay. could be a book that is number five in a series, or maybe any book from a series that has five books. It could literally be the book The Five by Hallie Rubenhold if you want to go down that route, or any book with the word five in the title. I've got on my bookshelf here, The Five People You Meet in Heaven. You could read that. You could reread a book that you read when you were five, or maybe you could read a book that got recommended from a booktube top five video, like this one by Arena Reads, for example. I'll link to it below if you want any of her suggestions. It could be a book with five chapters, a book with five pages, a book that you've already read five times. Get creative, your prompt is five. Okay. So five. I'm just gonna go with this prompt. I could go look at Megan's or Tasman's, but I'm happy with this prompt. I like it. Five, five, five. Okay, so looking at my stack, I wanna try to fit this one for the first prompt. So what, how could I fit this one for the first prompt? I rated the first book in the series five stars. So like this could be a five star prediction. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my god, scratch that. This is perfect. This follows a group of girls, and guess how many girls there are? Five. That's perfect. Okay, <laughs> so this is the first book that I'm going to be reading. Am I stupid for reading a 700-page book during a week-long readathon? We're going to find out. I did already start this today, so I'm 130 pages into it, which is like, I feel like I could do this. I, like... I've read over a thousand pages in one day. I don't know why like the size of a book makes me intimidated. So this is gonna be my first book. Okay, so to tell you a little bit what this is about since it is a sequel. So the first book we're following, basically the, the main main character is the daughter of Dr. Jekyll from Jekyll and Hyde and her mother has recently died and she discovers that her mom has been 
giving a lot of money to somebody named Hyde. So she goes to investigate and she finds a girl named Diana Hyde who is Hyde's daughter. This kind of leads her to come across this like mystery of different girls who have been experimented on by their fathers. So she meets the Bride of Frankenstein, she meets the daughter of Dr. Moreau, like she meets a bunch of people from like gothic Victorian stories. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are in this, like there's so many characters that like are very familiar to me and they are basically investigating this society of scientists who do very dark and dangerous experiments on girls. So that's what the story is about and it was so good. I gave the first book five stars. I love this cast of characters so much so I am very very excited to read the sequel and it's so weird because I don't often read sequels and I especially don't often read sequels in the same month or within the same like couple of weeks that I read the other books. You know like if I do read a sequel it usually takes me like a year <laughs> if even that. So like the fact that I'm picking up a sequel of a book should tell you how much I loved it. not my day. <laughs> I think I'm getting sick. Totally like a normal sick, not like COVID sick. I think I just have allergies, you know, fall weather, whatever. I haven't felt great today, but I did a lot of reading as you can see. <laughs> so I am on page 604. Basically all I did today was read. I did film a video and I edited it. But other than that, like I was just in bed reading the whole day. And I am loving this so much. When I was reading the first book, I was wondering if certain gothic vampire characters were gonna appear and they never did. The first book took place entirely in England and then in this book they traveled to Vienna and Budapest and I'm just gonna say the vampire characters showed up <laughs> like I am so excited Dracula is in here Carmilla and Carmilla's girlfriend Laura they don't really come in until halfway into the book but once they're introduced <laughs> hello excuse me <laughs> but once they meet up with the main characters they play a really big part in the book and I'm so excited and it's interesting because the main plot of this is that Van Helsing has been experimenting on his daughter and a bunch of other people to create vampires to like take over the society because he was kicked out and so the vampires that he creates they're not paranormal they're they're scientific vampires but they need blood and they can heal themselves and it's really hard for them to die and they have like eternal life so yeah Dracula and Carmilla are in it and I'm just so excited like I didn't think the series could get any better but it did and I'm in love with it and even though it's so long I don't even care because I love the story and these characters so much so I've just been enjoying like hanging out in bed and reading this all day so I only have a hundred pages left so I'll definitely be able to finish this either tonight or by tomorrow morning which is great because did I expect that I would read this entire book on the first day of the readathon no <laughs> I also feel really bad because I'm buddy reading this with Megan and I'm the worst buddy reader ever because I only have two modes. Either I don't read the book at all or I read it so fast <laughs> that the other person can't keep up with me. So to anyone that I've ever buddy read with or ever will buddy read with, I hope you know what you're getting into. <laughs> okay, so wow, okay. I just finished this. Oh, it ended on a cliffhanger and now I really want to read the last book. Let me talk out my feelings about this book. Amazing. Immaculate. I love it. <laughs> I love these characters so much. Like they're definitely, they're probably my favorite cast of characters, like of anything. I just love them so much. All these girls are so different and they, like they have nothing, like personality wise they have nothing in common the one thing that brings them together is their fathers so it's like a group of girls with daddy issues and if that is not the most me thing ever already i'm like i relate and even though they like they bicker and they argue and they don't agree on things 
they have this core love for each other and protection of one another where they would do anything for each other and I just love that so much. <laughs> what am I rating this? I'm trying to decide. I think I'm gonna rate it 4.5 stars because it was great. Like the plot was great. I loved the, the introduction of the new characters, Dracula and Carmilla, Van Helsing, but did it have any business being this long? Absolutely not. It definitely could have standed to go through another round of editing, like slash, just like slashing, you know? Um, there was a lot of repetition, a lot of jokes that were told like over and over and over just because of how long it is. Like it really didn't need to be this long. It could have been like 200 pages less, but like overall that didn't take away from my enjoyment of the book because I love this story and these characters so much. I would read about them doing anything. I just feel like it was a little long-winded. But with that being said, I read it in like two days. So I don't know. It was great. I loved it. 4.5 stars. I am like already ahead of schedule of this readathon. I thought that this was going to take me like four days and it only took me two. Now I'm going to find my next prompt. So, oh, oh, ow. <sighs> My volume was turned up all the way and I had music playing. Yeah, are you back now? Hopefully you're done with your book now. So I want to know what you thought of it. What star rating would you give it out of five? And on the next end screen, you're going to see four doors. Click the one that best represents the star rating that you gave this book. Or if you didn't after the book, you will see a door for that too. Off you go on your quest. Okay. So I rated it 4.5 stars, so I'm clicking the 4 to 5 star door. I don't know whose video this took me to. Who's it gonna be? Megan! Welcome <laughs> to prompt two. So as you probably know by now, each of us three main co-hosts have a special way we are giving our prompts. And if you don't know already, mine are all in the form of memes. So I'm gonna show you a meme. <laughs> of course they are. Megan is the meme that queen. Means, however you choose to interpret that. I'm gonna give you some suggestions, but you by no means have to follow them. So the meme for this prompt is... <gasps> I'm back! <laughs> I think this is a really easy prompt. I think I've been really good. Is it? <laughs> I think there's a lot of ways you can interpret it, and it's very easy to interpret. So I think the most obvious interpretation is a sequel or perhaps a companion novel to a book you've already read. So you are reacquainting yourself with your favorite or perhaps it's not your favorite characters, but you're back with those characters. Those characters are back. <laughs> or it could be a book about a character returning somewhere, perhaps where they grew up or a place that is important to them. Or you could go back to a book you'd previously DNF'd or put down for whatever reason. Maybe life got in the way. This is an opportunity no. to go back to that book. Okay, no. I hope you have an idea of what to read. Now you need to go I don't. And read it. You need to go and do that. Okay, I'm gonna need to give this prompt some thought because it would have been perfect for this book. So let me pull out my stack of books. I don't have to choose from just these books, but I would like to because these are all like short books that I really wanna read, but I haven't really found a video or an opportunity to read them. So I guess I'll quickly go through what I have here. So I have Burning Roses, My Sister the Serial Killer, Time Was, Watch Over Me, Dusk, wait, <laughs> every time I start to say this title, my like brain, boink, head empty. Dusk, oh my god, why am I struggling so much? Dusk or dark or dawn or day? Can anyone say that correctly the first time? Um, remote Control, Hammers on Bone, and Over the Woodward Wall. So, what was the challenge? I'm back, okay, I'm back. What could, what could that, what could I do with that? See, she said it could be like a companion to another book, which this is the book from inside of Middle Game. So this is kind of a companion, but I don't really know if that would fit since I haven't read Middle Game. So no. Both of these are about ghosts, which like ghosts could be kind of like, I'm back, like I died, but I'm back. Um, ooh, or Nina LaCour. This is her first book in like three years. So it could be like, her saying, I'm back with my new book. Okay, we're gonna go with that. So, the book I'm reading is Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. So this is about a girl who I believe is 
uh, in the foster care system, but she just graduated high school and aged out. So her foster home is like kicking her out and she gets this opportunity to go work on a farm. And it's like this big farm where a bunch of people live there and she's hoping that this is gonna be like her first real home and family and sense of security, but it turns out that there's ghosts on the farm of like past residents and also her past is haunting her. So yeah, like I said, this is Nina LaCour's first book in a couple years. I think her last book was We Are Okay, which came out four years ago, three years ago, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm very excited for this. I feel like Nina LaCour has had this amazing ability with her books where I always read them at the exact perfect time in my life. So the first book that I read by her, Everything Leads to You, was the very first queer book that I ever read. And then I came out like a week after I read it. And then her, the second book, We Are Okay, is about grief and like losing a loved one. And I read that at like a really, really dark time in my life when I was really grieving. I'm excited to see what this is about and if, if it resonates with me as much as her other books. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. So on the cover, she has her eyes like looking down and then when you open it, she's looking at you. <gasps> oh my God, I love that. Okay, so I finished Watch Over Me and I don't really know how I felt about it. It was very quick, let's see. It's only 253 pages, but I've only been sitting here for like max two hours. So I read it fairly quickly and I liked it. I think that I liked the vibes and the aesthetic more than I actually liked the plot and the characters. The vibes of this really reminded me of the movie Midsummer, which I love that movie. So much to the point where I kept thinking this was gonna take a horror turn, but it never did. Which like, to be honest, if it did take a turn into horror, I probably would have rated it higher, but it had the vibes of Midsummer without the horror, if that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. Like her, her writing is really great. I just don't think that this particular story and these characters were my favorite. So I think I'm gonna give it three stars, but like, it's not a bad book. I think a lot of people would like this and I would still recommend it, but but just for me, it's not my favorite of her books. So, moving along, trying to be very careful because I have my camera stacked up on a stack of books on my bed and it could very easily topple over. You want to see an end screen asking you if you guessed where this book was going. See you in a bit. Um, yes. I think I, the ending was pretty like typical, so yes. Who's it gonna be? Door number three has now opened. Hello. Hello. I'm Megan. So the meme for this prompt is... No, I don't want to play any more games. I'm fucking gamed out. I've had enough of playing games. For this, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is a book with a game element. It doesn't have to be a major main uh. part of the book. Something like The Hunger Games is obviously the obvious choice. Or you could go for a book that reminds you mm. of a popular game. So I think any murder mystery book would work for this because you could Ooh. say that it's similar to Cluedo, a similar vibe to Cluedo. Now go away, pick your book. I hope this one isn't too hard for you. I had to get Queen Gemma Collins in there. It is hard, Megan. Here's my stack of books. To my knowledge, none of these are about a game. Okay, let me just like quickly read the synopses of all of these and see if something jumps out to me. Oh my god, this might work. Okay, Burning Roses by S. L. Huang. This is a fantasy uh, Little Red Riding Hood retelling. And the synopsis says, Rosa, also known as Red Riding Hood, is done with wolves and woods. Hugh Yi, the archer, is tired and knows she's past her prime. They would both rather just be retired, but that's not what the world has ready for them. When deadly sunbirds begin to ravage the countryside, threatening everything they've grown to love, the two must join forces. Now blessed and burdened with the hindsight of middle age, they begin a quest that's a reckoning of sacrifices made and mistakes mourned, of choices in family and the quest for immortality. So, 
This is Red Riding Hood and The Hunter. I think it's sapphic, a romance between the two of them. And they're retired, but now they're like being pulled back into the world of quests. They're tired, they just wanna retire. They're sick of playing all these games, but the world is pulling them back in. Oh my God, why is this perfect? Okay, so this is the next book I will be reading. So it's now um, day three. Four of the readathon. I'm reading this. I just left the the live show on Megan's channel, which was so much fun. We played a bunch of games and did some reading sprints. Oh, Let's sorry. start with the end of the world. Why don't we? Oh, I know it. <laughs> Riley, the fifth season. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and I read 70 pages of Burning Roses, and I'm really enjoying this so far. So basically, like I said, we're following Rosa, who is Red Riding Hood, and then Hu Yi, who is an archer. I thought that they were in a relationship. They're not, they're friends, but they both have ex-wives who they like left or aren't with anymore. They both are kind of being like haunted by things in their past. So Rosa has a lot of guilt for some murders that she committed in her past and then Hu Yi is being hunted by someone that she mentored who is now like turned evil and is trying to hunt her down so now they are kind of working together to stop that person but yeah i am just like really trying to keep busy today and distract myself so i'm gonna keep reading more of this i think i'm i'm just like about halfway through so i can definitely finish this within the next couple of hours. All right, so I finished Burning Roses and I'm not really sure what to give this. I liked it. So what I thought was really cool about this is that it mixes like Eastern and Western folk tales together. So we have stories of Red Riding Hood. There's some of like Goldilocks, Beauty and the Beast. And then also, I didn't know this until I kind of like looked up reviews about the book, but the other main character, Hu Yi, who I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, um, is from a Chinese fairy tale. So there was like this blend of East and West, which I thought was very interesting and worked really well together. I also really liked how this was following older women. Both the main characters were older, they had families, and they were struggling with their role in their family with their spouses and children. One reason why I maybe didn't enjoy it as much as I thought that I would is because the the main I don't I don't really know that the blurb of the, or the summary of this book accurately gives a good idea what the book is about. I would say that the main focus of this book is character development and family relationships, uh, the roles of being wives and mothers, and sort of like wanting to do best by your family but not really being able to. But the synopsis kind of makes it sound like it's gonna be like a fun quest, hunting down a dragon type of story. And that's, I mean like, yeah, that's kind of what it was, but that was almost like, that was like the subplot. That was like going on in the background. So I mean, I enjoyed this, but it wasn't my favorite. So I think I'm gonna give it like 3.5 stars. So now we're going to find my next prompt. Sorry, Loki. <laughs> Loki's sitting in my lap and I just set my laptop on top of him. You're gonna stay there? Okay. And I'll be asking you whether you liked the main character. Oh. So the main character in this was Rosa and I did really like her. I, did, I don't even think I really talked about that. I really liked them and her story and her journey. So I'm gonna go yes. Welcome I'm still on Megan. To door four. <laughs> so if you haven't seen me already, my name is Megan. Basically, all my prompts are in the form of memes. So I'm going to show you a meme. All right, Megan. What meme is it? So the meme for this prompt is... I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. I love that <laughs> meme so much. I love it. The main way that I would interpret this prompt is picking a book that you have heard very mixed things about. Or it can okay. just be that you've heard lots of good things and one bad thing. You may not own a lot of books. Okay, shh. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is look up all of these books on Goodreads and read whichever one has the lowest rating. So let me like quickly look up all of these books and then I'll tell you which one has the lowest. So the book with the lowest rating, it has a 3.74, which isn't like 
terrible. And that is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyankam Braithwaite. I'm like really excited. I actually just recently bought this. So this follows a woman who her sister keeps killing her boyfriends and she has to help her clean them up. And then her sister starts dating one of the main character's co-workers who she has a crush on. So she has to now decide, does she want to keep protecting her sister or does she want to try to save this guy who she likes and turn her sister in basically. So yeah, it sounds good. I've heard like mixed things about it. I know people who really liked it. I know people who just thought it was okay. So we're gonna find out what I think of it. Ooh. I'll start my book. <laughs> Okay, I don't even like know where to begin. I feel like this morning has been stressful. So stressful. Like, I don't even, I don't want to bring up the election, but like I also feel like it's kind of the elephant in the room and I'm like going through it. We're all going through it. And I can't just sit here and like pretend that nothing major is going on, but it's like dragging out. I'm so stressed. I've barely been sleeping. Like I can't turn off the news. And so this morning I was like, okay, I just, I cannot watch the news for a couple hours. So I literally just like laid in bed. I found the audiobook um, for my library for my sister's a serial killer. I put my phone on do not disturb. I was like, nobody's gonna talk to me. I'm not gonna get any news updates. I just need a moment to like <sighs> decompress and chill. So I listened to this entire book um, and I finished it and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the audiobook as well. So like I said, this is about a girl who has a younger sister and her sister is like her mom's prized child. Nothing she does is ever wrong and she always blames the main character for things like if, if the sister does something wrong or makes a mistake, it's always the main character's fault. Her sister is like the prettier one, the one who gets more attention. The book is written in like little vignettes almost like every chapter is only like two or three pages and it's kind of like flipping back and forth between present and then some past memories and basically at the start the main character gets a call from her sister saying i just stabbed my boyfriend and apparently this is not the first time something like this has happened so the main character rushes over to help her cover it up and dispose of the body and her sister every time that this has happened her sister always has an excuse, always makes it seem like, oh, these men attacked her, that's why she killed them. But the main character, her name, her name is Cordy. So Cordy, the first couple times it happened, she was like, she believed her sister, like, okay, yeah, these men attacked you, you defended yourself, got it. But it keeps happening with every boyfriend that she has. And so she's starting to be like, something's not right here. And so she is a nurse at a hospital and she has a crush on one of the doctors there who after meeting her sister decides to ask her out and they start dating. So now she's really worried about this doctor dating her sister because she's like, my sister, something up there, something's not clicking. And she's really struggling the whole book with like, does she still help her sister even though she knows what she's doing is wrong? Does she still protect her and defend her? Or does she do the right thing and like, warn this guy or like turn her sister in and so that's kind of like what the book is about it's about like do you still choose family even when you know it's wrong i really enjoyed this i think maybe one of the reasons why people didn't like this because it does have a lower rating on goodreads is that i think some people went into it expecting it to be like a thriller and it's not there's really no like mystery aspect or th like thrilling aspect we know the whole time what's going on like her sister's killing people <laughs> like that's not a mystery it's not really a thriller it's really more about like sisters and family and like having to make really really tough decisions i think i'm gonna end up giving it like 3.5 four stars not really sure but i definitely enjoyed it and it was a very nice and much needed distraction this morning <laughs> Let's find out what my next prompt is. And then come back here and I'll be asking you whether you enjoyed the setting. Oh, the setting. So it takes place in Nigeria and a lot of it, the actual setting in Nigeria is a hospital a lot of the time because that's where the main character works. I really liked the setting, so I'm gonna go yes. Hi there, I'm Monica, oh. and I'm so happy to hear that you loved the setting in your last read. My prompt is language, and you can take this in a couple of different directions. Maybe you want to read a book that has a completely made up language and alphabet, or maybe you want to read a book like The Fifth Season. Oh my god, I love that book. 
where while she doesn't create an entirely new language, she does create new vocabulary and ways of speaking in order to reflect the world and places that the characters are in. Or maybe you want to pick up a book that plays with language in a fun way. Or maybe you want to read a book that's been translated from another language into your own. Okay, okay. I like this challenge. I just don't know what I'm gonna read for it. Okay, so here are the books that I have left. Wait, I'm missing one. I forgot this one. So here are the books that I have left. None of these really stick out to me for a language challenge. I don't think any of them were translated. Language, language, what? could I do? To be honest, the book that I really want to read is Over the Woodward Wall. How would this fit? The thing is that I have yet to have a five-star book during this readathon. The first book I read was very close. It was 4.5, but I really want to read a five-star book. And this, if you don't know, is written by Seanan McGuire. It's another like pen name for her. And I rate all of her books five stars. So like, I really want to read this book. <laughs> How could I make this fit? No, that's stupid. Okay. I'm really stretching this challenge, so I'm sorry, Monica, but I'm gonna use this for the language challenge because A. Deborah Baker <laughs> is a pen name. So it's like she's using a new name to write this book. Does that count? <laughs> like I said, I'm really stretching it, but I really wanna read this. So we're doing it. I believe that this is like a book from inside the book of Middle Game. It's like a children's book that is talked about in that story but i've been told by many people that you don't have to have read middle game to read this like they're totally like isolated so basically this follows two children who climb over this wall that appears in their neighborhood and they find themselves in a new like magical world it sounds very wayward children to me so i'm very excited for this and oh my god i've had this arc for a while and i just have not found the opportunity to read it so I'm taking this. Even though it doesn't really 100% fit the challenge, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay, so I just finished Over the Woodward Wall and I gave it five stars. Are we at all surprised? I loved this so much. So basically, like I said, we're following these two kids who are the same age, they live on the same street, but they go to different schools, so they've never crossed paths. And one day, they both end up finding this wall that's not supposed to be there and they climb over it and find themselves in this new magical world where they're on a road the road of improbability there's these different kings and queens who rule this world it's just like oh it's so good if someone told me that this was another wayward children book I would believe it. It totally felt like it could have been a part of that series, which is like everything to me because you guys know that's my favorite book series. So I just, I'm like so happy. And these two kids were very different. Avery, who is this boy who is very like put together and organized and everything has to be clean and perfect. There's rules and he follows the rules. And then we have Zib, who is this like wild, free-spirited girl. So they could not be more different, but they have to travel in this world and on this road together because the only way that they can get home is together. Since they came into the world together, they have to leave the world together. While they're traveling this road, they meet many different people who some of them are trying to help them get home. Others are trying to keep them there forever. It really reminds reminded me of like Alice in Wonderland combined with like The Wizard of Oz because they're traveling on this road and they they meet many people and have obstacles on the road. I loved it so much like I, I already want to reread it. It was just everything that I wanted and it's got me even more excited now to read Middle Game even though that I know they're like totally different but I'm just so excited. This is so good. I hope that um, she writes more in this series because like the way that it ended, there definitely could be more stories following these kids in this world. So I hope that this isn't just like a one-time thing. So I loved it. Like Sean and McGuire, like being a Sean and McGuire fan is the most amazing thing ever because it's like the gift that keeps on giving. She writes under three different names. She publishes so many books in a year. It's just a great time to be a Sean and McGuire fan. <laughs> So that was the last challenge, I think. Let me double check. Okay, it says finished. Hey everyone! Hey everyone! Hey everyone! Congratulations on finishing the first ever Thousand Doors Readathon. We hope.
hope you've had loads of fun. We've really enjoyed hosting and participating in it ourselves. And that's all thanks to you and our incredible guest hosts for making this such a magical experience. You guys, okay, I just want to say that this is probably the most fun readathon that I've ever participated in. Just like the amount of work that went into it to create this whole like game and experience was just so great. Be sure to check out the three hosts, Emma, Megan, and Tasman. I will link their channels down below. And also this readathon is going on all month. I decided to do it in the first week. I think a lot of people were mainly participating in the first week, but it's an entire month long readathon. So if you didn't know about it or you missed it and wanted to participate you still have the entire rest of the month to do it and there's so many other prompts besides like the ones that I got I kind of want to go back through and like see what some of the other prompts are I'm just like so impressed with this readathon it was so much fun and I really really hope that they do it again so to recap these were the five books that I read so we had European travel for monstrous gentlewomen which I gave 4.5 stars then we had watch over me by Nina LaCour which I gave three stars. Then we had Burning Roses by S.L. Huang, which I gave I think three stars. My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkom Braithwaite, which I gave 3.5 stars. And then lastly, Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker, <laughs> which I gave five stars. So like overall, this was a pretty successful readathon for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because I had so much fun making it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!